welcome everybody to this session. You're most welcome to a topic which I think couldn't be more timely. And we're very lucky to have somebody who really understands the background with us. My name is Catherine Meenan and I chair the Germany group in, in the Institute. So we're delighted to be joined today by Dr. Ronja Kempen, who's a senior fellow at the Institute for German Institute for International and Security Affairs. And we we're very grateful that she's, she's taken time to be with us. Dr. Kempen will speak uh, as normal for about 20 minutes, and then we'll go to the Q&A. And as with all our online uh, events, you'll be able to join the discussion using the Q&A function on Zoom. And so send in your question and we'll come to them once uh, Dr. Kempen has finished her presentation. Uh, and please identify yourself if you have any particular um, attribution. Uh, today's presentation and the question and answer are both on the record. And please feel free to join the discussion uh, using the handle at IIEA. So now I'd like to introduce Dr. Kempen and then I'll hand over her directly. She is, as I say, a senior fellow at the German Institute for International Security Affairs, International and Security Affairs, the Stiftung für Wirtschafts- und Politik in Berlin, advising the Bundestag, the German government and business community on foreign policy issues. Previously, she led the EU External Relations Research Group at SWP and advised the German Federal Foreign Office. And next year, she will hold the Alfred Brosser Chair at Sciences Po in Paris. Her research focuses on European security and defence policy, particularly the EU's common security and defence policy, as well as France and Franco-German relations. So I think we're very lucky to have her and I'll hand over to you, to you now. Thank you. Thank you very thank you much, much uh, Catherine, Catherine, for having me, and thank you very much for the invitation. I'm I'm delighted to be um, with you today, even though I'm not in uh, in Dublin, but uh, sitting here uh, in uh, in my office in uh, in Berlin. As um, as Catherine was was saying, I mean the the topic couldn't be uh, more timely. Talking about the Franco-German uh, relationship, um, I think it's it's one of the pressing uh, issues. Um, what will come out uh, of the French uh, parliamentary elections um, later this month and the beginning of of July, and also of course how long will the German government uh, hold? Um, the tri-party uh, traffic light coalition, um, which is under stress uh, also uh, due to the outcome of the European uh, elections. Um, and uh, of course, uh, upcoming uh, elections in three of our uh, Bundesländer uh, in, uh, in autumn and September uh, of this year. But uh, let me start by um, by, by looking uh, slightly uh, back um, to um, the Franco-German uh, relationship. Um, I think um, you hopefully do agree with with me that it came as a bit of a surprise that once uh, the the Ukraine war started, Russia uh, fully uh, attacked um, Ukraine, France and Germany all of a sudden drifted apart. And I think um, it came as, as a surprise to me, at least for like four reasons. The first reason I wanted to stress is that here in, in Berlin, uh, in Germany, um, we had, we still have a government that is very well pro-European, all German governments, of course, are pro-European, but this one in particular um, said it wanted to change um, European, uh, Germany's attitude towards the European Union, be more of a partner, um, and, and clearly, um, you know, mark, uh, dismark itself from uh, the Merkel uh, area. Um, we have the Green Party uh, as part of uh, this tripartite um, partisan government and the Greens, the German Greens have always been very close to French uh, President Macron. So I think there was hope that, you know, once the, the government has changed, had changed here in Berlin, that that would open up new possibilities for the Franco-German um, engine, so to say, um, to, um, well, to, to, to come up uh, with a, with a common um, integrationist European agenda. I think the second um, 
um, point I wanted to mention um, is that um, ever since the war uh, against Ukraine started, um, Germany has, of course, significantly uh, changed its security and defense uh, policy. You do remember the Franco-German struggles, especially in security and defense politics. The French always blaming the Germans for not being normal, um, being too shy when it comes to foreign intervention, using um, the German armed forces as an instrument of Germany's foreign uh, but, but foreign policy, politics. Um, and with the famous Zeitenwende, um, especially the speech uh, that Chancellor um, Olaf Scholz gave on the 27th of February 2022, I think there was great hope also in, in Paris um, that Germany now would, in their eyes, become a more uh, normal, um, e.g. A, a partner that would be joining um, the, the, the French French vision um, in uh, in the area of security and defense politics. Germany, um, well, not only substantially uh, don't, uh, thus enlarged its defense budget, uh, but also for the very first time, um, I think, decided um, to attribute lethal um, um, weapons to a country at war, something that usually uh, this country has never done um, before. Um, the, the third element, um, I think, that um, would have been in favor of a, a more active Franco-German relationship at a time uh, of, of war is that, of course, both uh, governments in Berlin and uh, in, in Paris have been proven wrong in their pro-Russian uh, attitude. Um, I think Berlin and, and, and Paris have probably rightly been uh, accused by its European partners um, that they have been uh, too much inclined, um, too positive about uh, uh, Putin and uh, his his ambitions um, have um, ranked business um, and profits higher than um, security. Um, and so I think both, um, and if you do remember both um, countries, France and Germany, really reacted towards uh, its partners uh, in, uh, in Eastern Europe by saying, well, we have to excuse ourselves. You were right. We were proven wrong. Um, and now it's our uh, duty um, to come and help you um, in this uh, difficult uh, situation. So here, um, this, the, the two, uh, again, um, have been proven wrong um, and reacted in the same, uh, in, in, in a similar vein um, towards uh, Russia's um, well, imperialist uh, uh, politics. Last but not least, um, I think France um, had, has all also changed uh, its attitude at the beginning of the war. First, it had, of course, to leave um, um, Africa, um, another, so to say, a, a, I'm not saying battleground for the Franco-German relationship, but an area of tension, uh, of course, in the Franco-German relationship. The French always wanted uh, a more uh, European, a more German engagement uh, in, in Africa, whereas the Germans were always saying, well, don't tear us into uh, that continent, um, which we hardly know. We don't have any experience. We don't have any national interests uh, uh, over there. So once uh, France had to leave um, Africa and, 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 and Frank, Frank, Franco speaking uh, Africa that could have opened uh, a door for more uh, bilateral cooperation. Um, and also, I guess, uh, France, uh, Macron in particular, once he recognized that NATO is vital uh, for the security of our continent, uh, that again it could have opened uh, a new pathway uh, for a positive Franco German um, relationship. We do, of course, and that would be my second point, uh, know, uh, we do, of course, know from a historical perspective that Franco-German cooperation, especially in the area of security and defense uh, politics, has always been uh, a, a history of ups and downs. We had good times um, when the two um, aligned, um, forged huge uh, compromises, uh, drew um, ambitious uh, bilateral uh, agendas, and then uh, uh, 
broke apart or did not follow suit uh, to um, neither the, the European uh, promises nor um, on the on the bilateral uh, agenda. Um, you know, uh, following a suit uh, on on armaments projects, uh, for example. I'm not uh, going back uh, in all in all these uh, ups uh, ups and downs, but um, maybe just um, re quickly remind you uh, of some of the of the good and then some of the bad <laughs> times in in our in our bilateral uh, history. Um, uh, those of you who are my generation uh, have been socialized, uh, especially uh, in the European integration process by learning that, uh, of course, European integration started around the question uh, of uh, security um, between um, France and Germany. Um, all of the ideas of the European community of coal and steel and then further on the European defense community, of course, have been ideas um, to uh, hinder both parties, but, but especially Germany, uh, to ever uh, being able to go back to war uh, against uh, uh, France. In the Elysee Treaty, uh, 1963, the two, of course, um, uh, had a whole chapter on security and defense uh, uh, cooperation. And uh, I guess uh, early on in the 50s and 60s, we recognized that the two countries very much differ in their security and defense uh, political DNA. You're familiar with that. Um, the French did not accept the European defense community, uh, rejected it, whereas uh, the German Bundestag um, brought a preamble uh, to the Elysee Treaty saying that our security is entirely um, tied to uh, NATO uh, and the transatlantic alliance and the European Union uh, or the European integration can never outdate, uh, so to say, the, the value, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, well, the, the predominance uh, of the transatlantic uh, uh, link. Um, if, if we uh, try to uh, explain um, you know, why after a very good period in time that started, I guess, uh, uh, recently in the 20, around 2017, when Macron came to power, we saw uh, uh, an ambitious um, bilateral agenda um, on security and defense uh, political cooperation with the two major projects, the FCAS, um, so the future uh, aircraft system, and then the main uh, battle uh, tank uh, system, the second uh, huge uh, uh, armament uh, uh, cooperation um, agreement between uh, France uh, and Germany. And then we saw two years later the Treaty uh, of Aachen, which has been signed by, uh, by both uh, sides. Um, here again, um, with a huge, uh, big chapter on uh, security and, and defense uh, uh, cooperation, both um, in favor of the European Union uh, and strengthening again uh, the bilateral uh, component. And then a year later, um, the Franco-German compromise on drafting the EU's uh, first uh, security uh, political document, the strategic compass, which had been started under German uh, EU presidency and ended uh, uh, under uh, a French uh, EU presidency. Um, then again, uh, one, I guess, has to ask uh, why these good times are always followed by rather uh, back, uh, bad times and why there's always a backslash uh, in the relationship uh, between our, our two uh, countries. Um, I guess the, the best explanation um, I can give, uh, and this is not a new uh, explanation, you have heard it, I guess, uh, uh, ever before um, is that our two countries uh, uh, structurally differ uh, significantly uh, from uh, one another. Um, you could also, um, uh, to put it more simply, you could also say whenever the transatlantic relationship uh, is um, 
endangered uh, or there is is confronted with difficulties uh, these this these is these uh, are good news for the franco-german cooperation um, which explains why between uh, 2017 and and the early 2020s when trump was still president uh, uh, in the white house um, we saw uh, some uh, efforts uh, from uh, from uh, berlin and paris um, to forge some sort of security alliance. Every, uh, every time again, the transatlantic relationship is uh, is running badly. This is good news uh, for uh, France and Germany. Every time uh, the, the um, transatlantic relationship and NATO are in rather good terms, this is bad news uh, for uh, France and Germany. Um, and this is, I guess, what happened ever since uh, uh, the, the beginning uh, of uh, Russia's attack on, uh, on Ukraine, because Germany has reacted uh, in a very familiar way to many of its uh, allies um, in, in the Western Hemisphere. Um, it has uh, coordinated its uh, Ukraine uh, polit uh, politics closely um, with the Biden administration. Um, it has, of course, been uh, accused for being, you know, like too slow um, when it comes to arms deliveries, too hesitant, too shy. Um, the French president, he um, maybe has not deli delivered in absolute terms uh, as much as, as Germany has done, but was always the one who tried to break new ground with new initiatives, you know, got, being on the forefront, um, whereas Germany um, had uh, um, has been confronted with, you know, these blamings of, uh, well, you are reluctant. Um, are you really a reliable partner? But every time the United States was prone to go a step further uh, in its arms deliveries, Germany followed suit immediately. Um, so there has been this very intense uh, a dialogue uh, between uh, Berlin and, and Washington to the detriment of uh, the, act, the well the, the cooperation or the ties between uh, Berlin uh, and Paris, um, which of course uh, Paris disliked as you can <laughs> as you can easily uh, uh, imagine. It felt some way somehow a betrayed partner of a second uh, order. It, it then started to, to accuse the Germans of being uh, not European, um, uh, unsolidary, uh, and a country not very uh, in solidarity with its major uh, European partner, um, France. Um, the Germans uh, have not reacted to France's offer about, you know, having a dialogue on the importance of nuclear weapons, but then came up with this idea of the European, of a European sky shield where France was not consulted uh, prior uh, to this, but tried to, you know, uh, Germany tried to build up um, this aerial uh, defense uh, system um, um, which the French have not been very interested in because they were saying, well, we do have our nuclear arsenal, so no one will ever, uh, you know, dare to, to attack us um, because uh, there will be, of course, huge consequences. And so um, I guess we still, uh, although uh, there are here and there some positive signs and we have summits and meetings um, and consultations, um, we, we do still miss this, this kind of, you know, um, confidentiality uh, at the moment um, between the two partners, uh, Berlin and, and, uh, and Paris. Um, the two still differ um, on, you know, what will be the future or what should be the future of the European Union in the area of security and defense politics. What would a European pillar in NATO, for example, mean? What, how could it look like? Um, would we reclaim um, as Europeans some power from uh, the US? All these uh, issues have not uh, 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 resolved, even not yet uh, addressed, I guess, uh, in all honesty, between um, France and Germany. This is why um, I will briefly touch on it, and then uh, I guess we we will have a lot of uh, <laughs> issues to discuss, but this is why um, um, the, in well, why, I guess, um, 
both France and Germany um, started to be interested in revitalizing uh, the, Frank the Weimar Triangle. Um, those of you who uh, have never heard of the Weimar Triangle, it has been founded in the early 1990s between France, Germany and Poland. Um, firstly, with the interest, you know, of, well, enabling Poland to quickly join uh, NATO, but especially the European Union. Once uh, Poland joined uh, both organizations, the EU um, and uh, NATO, um, the Weimar Triangle was perceived by, I guess, all three partners um, as an ideal format, um, you know, to familiarize, so to say, um, the partners uh, uh, or the member states of Eastern uh, Europe um, with EU uh, politics. Um, Poland uh, supposedly uh, would be the spokespersons <laughs> um, uh, of the Eastern uh, European uh, countries. Um, uh, again, here again, I guess the Weimar Triangle also has its merits, but also has its its down uh, sides and 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 pitfalls. Um, it was dormant for quite a long time um, because neither France nor Germany um, were able and willing to cooperate with um, the right-wing Polish government uh, under uh, the leadership of the Kaczynski brothers. Then the then Kaczynski, uh, uh, one of the brothers. Uh, um, um, but uh, France and 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 uh, and Germany, I guess, in this in this period of you know, as I said, uh, unconfidentiality, mutual um, you know, suspicions uh, on on the position of the other um, um, initiatives or or uh, that have not been um, consulted uh, with the, the partner, I, th I think both looked uh, towards uh, Warsaw uh, after the change of government uh, in Poland at the end of this year and saying, well, maybe a third party could, you know, help uh, us um, getting rid of our disputes and could serve as some kind of, of a moderator. Um, and this is why I guess um, we have seen uh, the beginning of this year, um, uh, a number of initiatives, um, meetings uh, in this uh, famous uh, Weimar Triangle uh, format. Um, it's still, I guess, uh, the Weimar format still has to uh, prove uh, its uh, its uh, relevance. But I guess uh, I can uh, can can see. Um, three uh, areas where the Weimar Triangle could play an important uh, uh, role. The, the first one is, of course, um, uh, to forge a common European position on, on Russia. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I guess uh, France and Germany have been proven wrong by history um, in, their, uh, in their positive attitude towards um, uh, Russia um, and uh, well, the underlying assumption that trade, at least for the German side, that trade could change uh, the, the political course of the of the country. Um, Poland has always been uh, a fierce, uh, well, advocate for uh, a, a more um, vigorous uh, Euro European politics and stance against uh, against uh, Russia. And I guess here, um, the three, uh, especially since uh, Berlin and 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 Paris have adjusted uh, their position uh, on on Russia, uh, could play an important uh, role. I guess also a NATO uh, could be an important uh, field uh, where the where the Weimar uh, format or Weimar Triangle could help France and Germany overcome uh, their uh, divisions. Um, on the one hand side, uh, I guess um, Poland would join uh, uh, Berlin. Um, in saying, well, the the idea of an autonomous meaning independent uh, European security uh, and defense policy independent from uh, the US, of course, is for us not an option. Um, well, uh, Trump ahead, but uh, 
be it uh, like this, but but it, this is not a real option. At the same time, um, France and Poland uh, do share um, some uh, armament uh, cooperation uh, projects uh, together, um, have um, here um, intensified their cooperation. And this could help, um, you know, um, both sides to come up at least with a serious uh, dialogue on, uh, well, the relationship between the EU uh, and NATO, a possible European uh, pillar uh, inside uh, uh, of NATO, and the, the tricky question, you know, of how to resolve um, um, the, the problem uh, of armaments cooperation inside the European Union. Last but not least, I guess, where the Weimar Triangle could also play a, a, um, an important role is when it comes to the enlargement of the European Union. Um, it is, uh, well, an, an issue, of course, publicly defended in all three countries. Ukraine has to become a member uh, um, of, uh, of the European uh, Union. Um, uh, Moldau, uh, probably also a, a bigger question mark, I guess, on the Western Balkans, uh, honestly, uh, publicly, of course not. But I guess behind closed doors, uh, there's rather question marks uh, on, the, on the Western Balkans. But the problem here, I guess, is is more for the French uh, because uh, every enlargement has uh, to be consented uh, by a referendum uh, by so by the by the French uh, public, um, which is rather hostile um, or at least sceptical when it comes to uh, enlargement of the European Union. And here, I guess, um, a, a Polish standpoint uh, could help. Um, France, the leadership, but also, you know, like um, in, engaging um, with uh, the, the French uh, public sphere um, to maybe forge some better understanding of why uh, this kind of enlargement um, of course, is 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 vital um, or is in, in the European Union's uh, interest. And last but not least, of course, um, uh, Poland uh, as well could uh, help uh, France and Germany um, push for some uh, reforms. Uh, I'm not saying of of, of, of a treaty uh, a reform, but some reforms um, to make the European Union fit uh, for this uh, enlargement. So um, um, I'll probably end on this uh, rather uh, positive note. Uh, I think it's uh, it has been a very good sign uh, that the duo has uh, been opening up uh, um, for uh, for the Polish um, side, uh, that the duo has become a, a trio. Um, and so that there might uh, be a chance uh, to overcome some of the um, stumbling stones uh, that has been hindering uh, Franco-German uh, cooperation um, in the last two and a half years. Um, I'll end on this and I'll, I, I guess we will touch uh, on uh, again on, on the upcoming French elections in the Q&A, um, but you probably have uh, tons of other questions. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious and open.